I know a lot of you during this COVID time are looking to get back into RC cars or just starting and looking into converting your brush system into brushless. And there may be a lot of uh, things to consider. And so I wanted to go over in detail uh, bit by bit on how to do the conversion. So part one of the series is going to be going over the components and how they physically fit together. And then we'll go over what, how to select those components to make sure everything jives and it works well. I know this is a very popular car, the WL Toys 144001. You might know it with this body style. So we're gonna go ahead and take off the body and we're gonna go through the fitment of the components. So although we're gonna be using the WL Toys 144001 as an example for this video on the physical attributes of the components in order to convert it from brush to brushless, this is not meant to be a a do-it-yourself full-on step-by-step tutorial on how to modify this particular car. This is for, in general, what things to look for to physically fit into the vehicle. I will have a more detailed how-to step-by-step on modifying this WO Toys vehicle in particular, but this is not it. You'll, I'll bring up some of the aspects of it that are specific to this car as I go through the video, but just know that you don't need to take notes on those little things because I will have a video dedicated for that specifically. So how they come together physically and what you need to check out. Let's go over first brushed versus brushless. So a brush system will have two wires coming out of the motor. Brushless will have three. The first thing you need to look at is the physical size of the motor itself. This one you see is a 3650, 4300 kV. We'll worry about the kV later, but you wanna look at 3650. So 36 is the millimeter dimension of the diameter. So basically how thick it is. And the 50 millimeter dimension is how long this is. So the 36 is pretty snug on here already for this particular model. Um, so 50 is 50 millimeters from my thumb to my index finger and looking at the clearance you do have a bit more room if you wanted a physically larger motor so a physically larger motor will obviously be heavier so you want to kind of balance out the size uh, physically with what it is you're looking for next we're going to talk about the face of the motor here of all the components the motor fitment is what will give you the biggest headache so you want to make sure that everything fits and as far as fitting, we're gonna be talking about, we talked about the physical size to fit in that space of whatever RC car you have, but the face of the motor itself, where the pinion gear is uh, connected to the shaft, I'm gonna show you my crew drawing here. So basically this is the motor and this is the shaft. So the shaft for different motors will come in different thicknesses. So you wanna make sure that the motor you're using to replace whatever motor you currently have the shaft is the same size if you intend to use the same pinion gear. So the pinion gear is just a little gear that goes on the shaft itself. So the pinion gear will have a hole, and so that hole needs to match the shaft. So that's why the shaft size is super important. If the shaft is too big or too small, the pinion gear you have isn't going to slide on and won't be secure, and it's not going to work. So you're going to wait all these months or weeks for that product to come in only to find that it doesn't fit. So you want to make sure that you know the shaft size, the thickness of it on your current setup if you plan to reuse the same pinion gear. Another aspect of the motor itself has to do with the spacing of the holes. So these holes is what's used to secure the motor to the motor mount so that it stays in place and isn't wobbling around because there's a lot of torque on this thing so it's there's a lot of stress on it so it does need to stay stationed with that motor mount and so depending on the motor mount that you have it'll have different number of screws it'll have different spacing between uh, between the motors itself so this particular one I believe has two screws that secure the motor to the mount and yours will probably be the same. So you just wanna make sure that that distance is gonna be the same for the new motor you buy compared to the existing motor that you have so that you can reuse the mount. Another aspect that I actually forgot to consider when I did a conversion on a different car was the size of the holes. So <clears throat> if you plan to reuse the screws that come with the vehicle to mount 
the mount to the motor, then they obviously need to have the same thread type and physical size to go into the new motor. And so that'll vary depending on what uh, RC car you have. So I'm not gonna be able to do that for you, but that's something you wanna check. Again, the shaft size or shaft thickness, the spacing of the holes, and the hole size itself. So how this works is that the motor turns the pinion gear that is in here, and that turns another gear in here, which is connected to a shaft going the length of the car, which turns the wheels. So the pinion gear, most people are going to reuse the pinion gear for the W L Toys 14401 in particular, only because the pitch size, which is basically the, every gear has a dimension of the teeth length and the spacing and the shape. And so that needs to mesh the gear in, for the pinion gear in here that's connected to the shaft of the motor needs to mesh with the gear on the shaft. And so it is nearly impossible to find a replacement pinion gear that is of the same pitch. So most people are gonna reuse the pinion gear, but just add a different motor that's more efficient that has a higher rotations per minute. The next component we're gonna discuss is the servo, and that's this guy right here. So the job of the servo is to change the direction of the tires, to basically move that. So there is a gear in here that moves this arm that rotates this direction connected to this rod that's connected to the tires. So when this servo moves, the tires move. So you see that kind of rotate. So in order to convert your RC car to brushless, you need to confirm that your servo has three wires coming out of it. Here you see a brown, red, and orange wire. So this is an aftermarket one because out of the box, this particular car has a five wire servo which is not compatible. Some systems already have a three wire, in which case you can reuse the servo, but for this particular car, the W Toys 144001 has a five wire one. So you do have to replace this. This is new and is not stock. You just need one that has a three wire servo. I will also provide a link or description, the name, I know it's kind of hard to see, this Emacs servo because you do need to fit this with the bracket that holds this in place. And you can't see it in this, at this angle, but basically this dimension will matter so that it can be mounted here permanently. You can, I guess, cement it or glue it, but it is affixed by these two screws on a bracket that holds this in place. The next thing we'll discuss is the ESC. So we talked about the motor, we talked about the pinion gear, and now, and we talked about the servo, and now we're gonna talk about the ESC. So the ESC needs to physically fit under the shell. So in this particular car, it comes stock with this body. So this body is yay high, yay wide. So my ESC doesn't happen to fit under here, which is common with this particular RC car. And so a lot of people have used this, it's made by a company called Fat Bodies, P-H-A-T bodies, and this is the ATTAK model, A-T-A-K. And so this has a lot more clearance to physically accommodate the size of the SC. We'll go over the component specs in a different video, but you need to, for, for this video, we're talking about physical fitment of components. So you need to just make sure that the dimension of the ESC that you're selecting for your system obviously fits under the body, so it's not all awkward. And so with this particular car, I'm gonna pull this under, you're gonna see that this, this bracket here is basically, it comes across, comes down, and back over, up and over. So there's basically a notch in the middle that houses the stock ESC. So this particular one is so big that it's just kind of floating in there. Um, so depending on how you want to do it, you may want to fix it to the car itself, but physically it needs to fit under the body without obviously um, being in the way of other components. I can appreciate that not everyone who's watching this video will be modifying this car in particular. So I do want to say that this servo that you end up buying, this little guy, the other end of that wire 
may or may not look like this with this connector. So this is a standard servo connector. I know that a lot of the smaller scale RC cars do not have this connector, but you do need this in order to place in a standard um, receiver. So again, the servo that you pick, make sure that the connector looks like this so that it can fit into your receiver. Some of them will be white and a lot smaller and you won't be able to reuse it. When you're shopping for an ESC, the ESC will come hardwired with the battery connector. So what you may want to do is select an ESC that has the battery connector that matches the batteries you currently use or intend to use. So this particular WL Toys 14401 comes with a T connector. This is not as common as not as standard as the XT30. So the reason why you see the XT30 and is so common is because each of these types of connectors have different amp ratings. So you can only, it can only take so much juice through the connector before it starts to burn out. So a lot of the higher end or modified RC cars will use the XT30, which is rated at higher amperage. So I happen to have this one so that I can use both the T connector and the XT30. This is just a conversion adapter. So T on one side, XT30 on the other. And I'll put a link in the description below on where to get that. Um, but if you wanted to or you wanted to commit to one type of battery connector, then you just choose an ESC that already has the connector for the battery you already own or that you intend to buy for your application. The next item you'll need to buy that doesn't really have any physical constraints, but that is the receiver. So it's this box little thing. I just happen to sticky tape it to the side of the ESC. But the receiver is basically a component that will speak to your radio. So you may have a different radio than this one. I'll have a link in the description on my review of this particular radio. But the manufacturer, this one happens to be FlySky, needs to match with the receiver on board so that they can speak to each other. When you're shopping for an ESC, the ESC will come hardwired with the battery connector. So what you may wanna do is select an ESC that has the battery connector that matches the batteries you currently use or intend to use. So this particular WL Toys 14401 comes with a T connector. This is not as common as, not as standard as the XT30. So the reason why you see the XT30 and is so common is because each of these types of connectors have different amp ratings. So you can only, it can only take so much juice through the connector before it starts to burn out. So a lot of the higher end or modified RC cars will use the XT30, which is rated at higher amperage. So I happen to have this one so that I can use both the T connector and the XT30. This is just a conversion adapter. So T on one side, XT30 on the other. And I'll put a link in the description below on where to get that. Um, but if you wanted to or you wanted to commit to one type of battery connector, then you just choose an ESC that already has the connector for the battery you already own or that you intend to buy for your application. That's it for the physical fitment of the components. We talked about the motor. We talked about the pinion gear. We talked about the servo. It's connected wire that needs to be three wires and the servo connector so that can connect to the receiver. We talked about the ESC that needs to physically fit under the body, whether it's this one or the stock one or any other one that you pick. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to select the components. So I know a lot of you are looking at buying the conversion kits that include an ESC and the motor together, but in my research of the budget ones, a lot of them don't work with each other. So basically, the long story short is that the ESC is under spec for the motor that it comes with and you do risk it burning out. So we'll go over that in a different video because uh, that one will be a little bit more in depth, but I wanted to go over at least the physical aspects of each component and how they physically need to fit inside the car. And that's it. So until we get to the part two, uh, that's it. If you want to leave any questions in your comments, I will go back to you as soon as I can. All right, take care, bye.